So I recently purchased a Nimbus X unicycle from unicycle.com and noticed that the, uh, the bearings don't seem to spin freely, uh, which is not uncommon with unicycles. Often there's, uh, the bearing holders are too tight. But here I've completely removed the bearing holders and the wheel still seems to not be spinning freely. Uh, my theory is that the design of the uh, ISIS hub which has spacers in between the cranks and the bearings is causing friction between the spacer and the bearing itself. It appears that the spacer is spinning and the piece of the bearing that it is touching is not spinning. <clears throat> My theory is that this is just really a poor design and I'm going to take this apart and look at it and if I take the cranks off and it spins freely uh, there's something wrong with the design. <clears throat> okay, I've now removed the cranks from the unicycle, the cranks and the spacers and as you can see the wheel spins much more freely than it did before. You may notice as I rotate the wheel that the, of the bearing the only piece that is actually rotating is the, uh, the silver inner race of the bearing that is right next to the axle. The black seal that's in between the inner and outer races is not rotating and shouldn't rotate. It would be wrong for it to be rotating. Uh, what that means is that if you want this wheel to spin freely, you anything that you have touching this bearing can only touch the inner and outer races. It can't touch that black seal. The actual uh, spacer that unicycle.com uses for this hub is much wider than that inner bearing race and therefore is going to touch that middle seal and cause friction and put pressure on a part that's not designed to take pressure. It seems to me like it's a it's a flawed design. <clears throat> so another issue I didn't expect with uh, this particular project which is that the wheel uh, will not come off the frame. So the bearing holder on this side of the unicycle is totally stuck in the frame. And in fact, you can see a little bit <clears throat> on this side where the the edge of the bearing has been uh, messed up by being clamped in the frame. This is a brand new unicycle. I've ridden it, you know, less than a mile. And I didn't make any adjustments to the bearings during that time. Uh, this side of the frame, there's a little bit, there's a little bit in here of the same sort of uh, deformation. <clears throat> uh, and I'm having great difficulty trying to get the thing off. So here I'm putting as much upward pressure as I can. It's either there's nothing, there's nothing bolting this frame on. The frame should just come off. The bearings are unattached. And it's simply not coming off. So I'm gonna have to do something to hammer this or uh, hopefully not drill it out. One of the bearing holders came off after some tussling, but this one is simply not coming off and it's gotta be at least, uh, 80 pounds of force and I'm putting on it something like that. It's just not working. So I did manage to get the wheel off the frame with the help of a screwdriver. Uh, one of the things you might be able to see, let me get a little light on this, <coughs> is that both bearing holders have uh, deformations that have been caused by the clamping of them. It seems like the metal on the outside here of this custom Chris Holm inscribed bearing holder is not hard enough uh, for the task that it's been given. Uh, again, on both sides of the wheel, we see similar deformations here. There's uh, yeah, aluminum shavings uh, from contact with the bearing holder. Uh, again, some you know real indications that the bearing holder has been deformed where it's contacted 
the bearing, the bearing has been deformed or contacted the bearing holder. On uh, on this side of the wheel, there's also some play in the bearing itself. So this is not the bearing moving on the axle. This is the outer end, the outer edge of the bearing moving relative to the uh, the inner race of the bearing, which is going to cause some slop in the system that you won't be able to co compensate for. Your the frame clamps to this outer edge of the bearing, and so there's always going to be a little bit of slop in this bearing. Uh, I'm not seeing the same behavior on the other side. It's worth noting that the bearings themselves spin perfectly well. So once they've been removed from the frame, the wheel spins completely freely. This is even better than it was spinning after I removed the cranks. So there was some, uh, some of the pressure that the frame was putting, uh, the being stuck in the frame that way, uh, was being put was putting on the bearings is one of the causes of the the lack of freedom of movement that I was seeing. So this this wheel is spinning the way a wheel should spin.